episode 10, we reviewed the pantheon of ancient gods and goddesses to whom the people of that day offered up their children as human sacrifices. We discussed how ancient sex and fertility rituals associated with the child sacrifices have been preserved through the ages by secret societies, including Aleister Crowley's Ordo Templi Orientis. The order, or OTO, is widespread among the nations of the world with camps, oases, and lodges dotting the face of the planet. In today's episode, I will share with you what takes place during the rituals of the OTO. In 1904, Aleister Crowley claimed to have received through divine revelation with demons a sacred work called the Book of the Law, a text which influenced revisions of existing OTO rituals. Using the information given to him from demons, Crowley reworked the OTO rituals in such a way as to build upon a certain secret that even most of the entry-level adherents are completely unaware of. Crowley said, quote, The OTO is in possession of one supreme secret. The whole of its system is directed towards communicating to its members by progressively plain hints this all-important instruction. In 1912, a chieftain of the OTO confirmed that the grand key in OTO rituals is sex magic, and he claimed that this secret links together all Masonic and Hermetic societies. The OTO rituals take the practitioner through a series of 12 levels called degrees. The first four degrees are called the Man of Earth Triad, the next three degrees are called the Lover Triad, and the final five degrees constitute the Hermit Triad. I'm going to walk you through some of the highlights of each of these degrees. Remember, the OTO ritual system is meant to gradually introduce and acclimate the practitioner to philosophies and practices that ultimately culminates in extreme sexual depravity and human sacrifice. In each degree, the candidate is taught additional catechisms, passwords, signs, and secret handshakes through ritualistic ceremonies. Each ceremony takes at least one to two hours. Because the many ritual components for these degrees are spread out over nearly 200 pages of text, I'm going to share a very abbreviated introduction to the degrees. Let's begin. Before a person is initiated into the mysteries and practices of Ordo Templi Orientis, he completes what is known as the Minerval Degree. It is an introductory degree in which he is considered an honored guest rather than as a member of the Order. The Minerval Degree is supposed to allow the participant to decide whether or not to pursue full membership, and it also allows full members to decide whether to admit the candidate beyond the Minerval Degree. During the Minerval Degree ritual, the candidate approaches a tent. Inside the tent is a man dressed in an oriental costume, who represents the first Islamic Sultan of Egypt and Syria, a historical figure named Saladin. Saladin was a Sunni Muslim of Kurdish origin, who led the Muslim armies against the Crusaders in the 12th century. Saladin extended his sultanate over Egypt, Syria, Mesopotamia, Yemen, and North Africa. In front of Saladin is an altar upon which sits Crowley's Book of the Law, as well as a sword and a platter of bread and salt. The inside of the tent is lit by a single candle. As the initiate reaches the doorway of the tent, a member of the sultan's black guard seizes the candidate and binds his hands and feet with rope then blindfolds him. Those familiar with Masonic ritual will recognize similarities in the form of the OTO ritual to other Masonic rituals. First, the guard knocks at the door and Saladin asks, Whom have you there? The guard replies, A prisoner, mighty Saladin. Have you discovered his identity? I have, mighty Saladin. He is a native of Corinth, but he has attained the freedom of the city of Athens, the ally of Mytilene. Saladin asks, why does he travel in the land of Egypt? He says that he is traveling to Heliopolis, the city of the sun. Are his intentions friendly? Yes, he desires peace and seeks wisdom. Saladin says, then let him confirm his aspirations with an oath. Sir, if your intentions be honorable, you'll be set at liberty and received with true hospitality in the camp of friends. Repeat your name at length and say after me, I, being and helpless prisoner in your power, 
hereby declare that I am a native of Corinth, a freeman of the city of Athens, the ally of Mytilene, and that I am traveling peaceably to Heliopolis, the city of the sun, in search of light and truth, of wisdom and of peace, humbly yet frankly, I demand your hospitality and participation in your mysteries, which I swear to study and to hold sacred and secret. And if I break this oath, at which Saladin then puts bread and salt into the mouth of the candidate, if I break this oath and betray the bread and salt, may the dogs devour my carcass. May I be mutilated and no more a man. At this point, the guard applies his sword in a penal sign. A penal sign or penalty sign is a sign made by all of the people present to remind the candidate that he has made a blood oath to keep what he has learned completely secret. An example of a simple penal sign could be drawing one's thumb across one's throat to simulate having the throat cut open. After additional components to the ritual take place, Saladin asks, are you ready to fight by the side of your comrades at the behest of the supreme and holy king, the Grand Master, Baphomet? If the candidate affirms his willingness, Saladin tells him, in order to obtain freedom to do your will, it is necessary to submit voluntarily to discipline and organization. The regulations of our order are strict. In order that you may do the one thing which you truly desire, you must therefore renounce all those other things which may tempt you to swerve from the one purpose of your sojourn among us. If it be your will to enter this army as a spy to destroy your comrades, so be it. Yet remember that you have made a solemn affirmation to us in these words, which you will again repeat after me. If I break this oath and betray the bread and salt, may I be mutilated and be no more a man. And all of the other practitioners who are present then give the penal sign. If the candidate has agreed to continue, he may then move on to the first degree, wherein the candidate seeks to become a man and a brother in the order. Saladin asks the candidate, do you understand that by entering this camp you have incurred the penalty of death? He responds, I do. A black guard then puts a dagger up to the candidate's throat. Saladin asks, Do you consider the honor of enrolling yourself among us full compensation for this doom? The candidate says, I do. Saladin says, Up to now, nothing has been done which would make it impossible for you to withdraw. But if you still persist, then nothing will ever enable you to sever the ties which you are now about to form with us and our order. Therefore, once more, for the third and last time, candidate, I ask you, do you still desire to become a member of our order? Please answer aloud. If the candidate answers yes, then Saladin pounds the altar with the dagger that the guard has been holding up to the candidate's throat, and Saladin says, then your will be done. Brethren, do your duty. At this point, the guard places the candidate's left hand on the open book of the law and holds it there by pressing the dagger into the candidate's hand. Another person grabs the candidate firmly by the throat, while Saladin asks, Are you willing to take a solemn obligation to keep inviolate the secrets and mysteries of our order? I am. Repeat at length your name and say after me, I, in the presence of the powers of birth, visible and invisible, and of this camp of free men, do hereby and hereon most solemnly promise and swear, never to reveal what I learn beneath the seal within the guarded border of this most holy order, unless it be to a true brother, and not to another, using a perfect portion of proper caution, that he may be duly tested, truly, by divine right of grip and sign, and of each word, that ye have heard in full possession, or else in session of such a camp as this within whose border I stand, aspiring to the holy order which I do know by the letters O-T-O. After additional ceremony, another oath is administered while Saladin holds a dagger to the candidate's throat. The candidate is made to repeat this, 
I do solemnly and sincerely promise and swear to obey the laws of the order in general, and in particular the rulings of the superior of the order as conveyed to me by the most mysterious master of this oasis, under the hand and seal of Baphomet. These several points I solemnly swear to observe, declaring them, each and every one, to be in accord with my own free will, under no less a penalty on the violation of any one of them, that of having my throat pierced with a dagger and my carcass thrown to the monsters of the sea that they may devour it. The guard then strips the candidate naked and the candle is blown out. The candidate is then led to stand next to a makeshift water well. In darkness, someone beats a drum and circles the well. While distracted, the guards sneak up behind the candidate and throw a hangman's noose around his neck and tighten it. The candidate is made to get into the well and immerse himself in the water up to his neck. The top of the well is then covered. After a period of darkness and silence, Saladin says, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the powers of nature said, Let there be light, and there was light. At which point, the guards remove the cover from the well, and remove the candidate from the water, leading him to the altar. There, Saladin puts the dagger back up to the candidate's throat and says, In the name of the secret master, in the name of the OTO, by the authority of the Grand Master Baphomet, I declare you a man and a brother. And the noose is then cut off of the candidate's neck with a knife. The candidate is then taught to always show favoritism in all things toward his fellow practitioners. Saladin tells the candidate, During the whole ceremony you have been exposed to many dangers and discomforts, and you were wholly helpless to defend yourself against malice and neglect. I pray you, bear it ever in your heart, should you at any time encounter any brother in nakedness, poverty, danger, or affliction, and be instant to relieve or succor him. And the first degree is concluded. While it is possible that an initiate can walk away before taking the oaths associated with the first degree, the OTO teaches that during the portion of the ceremony that has already been performed, a spiritual link has already been formed between the participant and the order, which will remain throughout the rest of that initiate's entire life. The second degree in the Man of Earth Triad is to help the candidate to attain the rank of magician. At the outset of the ceremony, Saladin tells the candidate, I warn you that a severe test of your sincerity will be required. Unless you are prepared to jeopardize your social position and possibly your liberty or your life, it will be better for you to withdraw this instant. I wish further to impress firmly upon you that this order is a serious body of men, courageous, earnest, and faithful, and that these remarks are not the make-believe terrors of orders instituted for the amusement of grown-up children. Say after me, I solemnly pledge myself to know, to will, to dare, and to keep silence. These several points I solemnly swear to observe under no less a penalty than that of having my breast cut across, my heart torn out therefrom, and thrown to the fowls of the air, that they may devour it. After the candidate takes the oath, he is told that his first act will be to repeat the order's declaration of the rights of man, which includes several so-called rights by which the candidate must govern his life. A few of these statements are these, there is no God but man. Man has the right to live by his own law. Man has the right to live in the way that he wills to do. Man has the right to love as he will, when, where, and whom he will. Man has the right to kill those who would thwart these rights. Afterward, Saladin puts the dagger to the candidate's throat and says, In the name of the OTO, by the authority of the Grand Master Baphomet, I consecrate you a magician and the candidate is then introduced to one of the most recognizable of the Illuminati symbols, the triangle. Saladin tells the candidate, I therefore affix this red triangle, the apex pointing downwards, as it were, a wedge of light splitting the clouds that surround birth, 
and warming life with its rays. This triangle is also the special symbol of the Lord of the Aeon, the crowned and conquering child, the eternal son that dieth not, whom we adore. I also gird you with this sword, which you are to keep sharp and bright, neither to draw without need, nor to sheathe, not without honor. There's quite a bit more, but let's move on to the third degree in the Man of Earth Triad. The third rank, called Master Magician, is the equivalent of the Master Mason degree in regular Freemasonry. During the ceremony, the candidate is given very lengthy instruction regarding traditional craft masonry, including a recitation of the catechisms of the Freemasonic degrees of Entered Apprentice, Fellow Craft, and Master Mason, along with an explanation of all the various Masonic systems. During the ceremony, Saladin calls for water from the well, but the guards return to report that the well has gone dry. Saladin tells them to seek diligently for water, they return and tell him that only a trace amount of water was found in a corner of the well. Saladin then drinks from the cup, which doesn't contain water, but a mixture of blood and laudanum, which is an intoxicating drug. Saladin drinks from the cup and says that the cup is bitter. Then he proceeds to fall down in front of the candidate, and while falling, Saladin grabs onto the post which supports the tent and pulls it down, causing the tent to fall. Saladin then declares that he is a dead man. During the third degree, the candidate is tied around his shoulders, wrists, waist, and ankles to a group of heavy weights totaling 156 pounds, which he must drag around as he walks. During the degree, he must pledge, quote, to obey the Grand Master Baphomet, to recognize his authority and his alone. All these points I solemnly swear to observe under no less a penalty than that of being stabbed in the bowels and my carcass burned to ashes, that no trace or remembrance of so vile a wretch may remain among men, especially master magicians. In the fourth and final degree in the Man of Earth Triad, the candidate seeks to attain the ranks of perfect magician and companion of the Holy Royal Arch of Enoch. This OTO degree takes elements from Scotch Masonry, including the offices of Scotch Mason, Knight of St. Andrew, and Royal Arch. During the degree, the candidate is given full instruction in the Scottish degrees of free and accepted Masonry. During the ritual, the candidate is again made to remove his clothing, to wear a blindfold, to remove his shoes, and walk around with a cable toe tied to each ankle. The degree includes this oath, quote, Upon these sacred and sublime symbols, I most solemnly and sincerely swear never improperly to reveal any of the secrets of the degrees about to be communicated to me, which oath, if I break, may my head be severed from my body by the sword of justice. These Man of Earth degrees follow a pattern based on the symbolism of the chakras and the stages of Kundalini Yoga. The ceremonies are meant to represent, in dramatic form, the participant's individual path in eternity. In the zero degree, the ego, a wandering god, is attracted to the solar system. In the first degree, the child experiences birth. In the second degree, the man or woman experiences life. In the third degree is the death of the individual. And the fourth degree represents the world beyond death, the glorified state of the initiate. It takes several years for an OTO practitioner to reach the fourth degree. During this time, the practitioner participates in the same rituals over and over again by performing various roles within the ceremony as other initiates go through them for the first time. This allows the practitioner time to fully mature and receive the knowledge and effects of the initiations. Beyond the fourth degree, the initiate enters the lover triad. He is taught in Hermetic philosophy, in Jewish mysticism and Kabbalah, and in black magic. And it is in this triad that more esoteric knowledge is taught to the practitioner, including worship of the god Pan, instruction about the destructive star known in the Bible as Wormwood, and the conjoining of Babylon and the Beast of Revelation. The Lover Triad is the next level of preparation that gradually desensitizes the practitioner, snuffs out his sense of morality, and prepares him for the abominable sex practices of the final triad, complete with child sacrifice. 
Join me in the next episode as we discuss the ceremonies associated with the Lover Triad and bring these satanic rituals out of the darkness and into the light. Thank you.